Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is lecture video seven, and we're going to do part two of conditional probability. So last time we talked about the formula for conditional probability, the probability of A given that B has occurred, or will occur, does occur, is the probability of A and B, the intersection, divided by the probability of B, whatever event is given, we divide by that probability. And that can't be zero, so please remember that. In general, remember that the probability of A given B is not the same as the probability of B given A, except in very few special cases. So in this section, we've covered the conditional probability, and today we're going to cover something called the multiplication rule of probability. Before we did the um, multiplication rule or multiplication principle for cardinality or counting. Okay. So um, the probability of an applicant being admitted to a certain college, this is an applicant, is 0.8. I'm going to let A equals admit, admitted. And then the probability of A equals 0.8. So it's very important to define our events and write down quantities as we go along. It will make the calculation so much easier. And then the probability uh, for a student in the college to live on campus is 0.6. So I'm going to say C equals campus housing. Now, the probability of C, though, I don't know. It says a student. So now... Uh, if I have an applicant, they first have to get admitted before they become a student. So the probability that you live in uh, campus housing um, is uh, C given A, and this is going to be 0.6. And it says, what's the probability that an applicant will be admitted to the college and will be assigned to the dormitory housing? So we start off with our formula for conditional probability, and we use the pattern. And so in the numerator will be both of the um, events, so A and C. And in the denominator will be the probability of the given, which is A. And so this will be 0.6, um, let's see, no, I'm filling in the wrong thing. So we need to fill in our values, and C given A is 0.6. We don't know P of A and C, but we do know P of A, and that is 0.8. And so if we multiply both sides by 0.8, we get that the probability of A and C equals 0.6 times 0.8. So this is the probability of a times the probability of A given C. So this is the basis for our multiplication rule. We're solving the conditional probability formula for the intersection, or AND. Now let's go back to our two uh, four-sided dice that are rolled. And we're going to let A equal the event that the sum is 3, and B will be the event that either a sum of 3 or a sum of 5 is rolled. So A, I'm going to write out what A contains. A contains this diagonal here, which is 1, 2, and 2, 1. And B has 3 or 5, so it contains the same first two elements, 1, 2, and 2, 1. And then we have to find the diagonal whose sum of elements, the elements whose sum are 5, and so I have 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, and 4, 1. All right. So there's 16 total outcomes. So the probability of A equals 2 over 16. Again, please don't reduce. And then the probability of B is equal to 6 over 16. So, I want to know what the probability um, that a sum of 3 is rolled given that the sum of 3 or 5 is rolled. All right. So, I'm looking for 
the probability of A given the probability of B. So this has to be the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Now the intersection of A and B, the reason that I wrote them out the way I did is so that it's easier to see the intersection. So it turns out that A is a subset of C, of B, I'm sorry, of B. So since A is a subset, an intersection of A and B is just equal to A. We have something that looks like this. A is inside B, so the intersection is just A itself. So this is going to be the probability of A divided by the probability of B. And so this is going to equal 2 sixteenths over 6 sixteenths. The denominators cancel, so I get 2 sixths. And now you're welcome to reduce this to 1 third as the final answer. So let's look at the formal uh, multiplication rule, how we get there. So we take and rearrange this. We multiply this equation uh, by P of B on both sides. And so we end up with the probability of A and B equals the probability of B times the probability of A given B. Or using the other alternative, we could uh, use this formula, B given A, and then we have the probability of A times the probability of B given A. <clears throat> so these are going to be the same answer if it's the same problem, regardless of which way you get there. It's either the probability of B times the probability of A given B, or the probability of A times the probability of B given A. So let's do another example. Um, we have, this is a little more complex, we have a barn that contains um, eight one-hump camels. I'm going to say that N1 equals eight, and these are the one-hump. And N2 equals seven, and those are the uh, two-hump. The camels come out of the barn randomly, one at a time. We want to find the probability that the seventh camel to exit the barn is the third two-hump camel to exit. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this would be the seventh. Now, we're saying that somewhere in here, there have to be two of the of two-hump camels. We don't care where. Anywhere. It can be any combination. And this one's going to be the seventh one. We want that to be a um, two-hump camel as well, the third one. All right. So let A equal the event that um, two two-hump camels exit the barn in first six, and B equals that the third two-hump camel exits as seventh camel from the barn. All right. Now, out of these six camels, first six camels, I need to choose um, two of the two hump, and I need to choose four of the one hump. Now, the way number of ways I can choose <clears throat> two of the two hump, uh, there's seven of them, and I choose two, any two of them. And how I choose four of the one hump, there's eight of them, and I choose four, okay? So the number of ways that I can choose the first uh, six is seven choose two times eight choose four. And then um, the probability of A that the first two, that, that there are two within the first six we have to divide by 15 choose 6. There's 15 total camels, 
eight of the one hump, seven of the two hump, and we're choosing six of them. And with quite a little bit of cancellation, writing out factorials, we get 42 over 143. And then I want to know, what's the probability of B given um, A? So, given that A has occurred, there have been two um, two hump camels come out. So there's seven minus two, two hump camels left. And then there are um, 15 minus six total camels left. And so this is going to give me five ninths. And so the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given A, which is equal to 42, 143 times 5 ninths, which will give me 210 over 1287. And if we do change that to decimal, it's 0.163170, etc which is about 0.1632 to four decimal places. Most of the time in this class, we're going to stick with four decimal places if we make it a decimal. So now, let's go to another uh, tr um, tedious one where we have to keep track of everything. So we have a schoolboy who has um, in his left pocket five blue marbles and four white marbles. In the right pocket, he has four blue and five white. So he's going to transfer one marble at random from his left pocket to his right pocket. And we wanna know what's the probability of him then drawing, you see the word then, that is a given or a conditional, of then drawing a blue marble from his right pocket. So let's define blue L equals selecting a blue from the left pocket, and WL equals selecting a white from the left pocket. And then I'm going to say BR is equal selecting a blue from the right at the end. This is what we're looking for. What's the blue and um, right, blue from the right at the end? Well, I need to write out BR and I'm going to write it as the union of two disjoint sets. So when I take the probability, I can use the axioms and it's easy. So it turns out that um, BL and WL, those are the only choices I have for removing a marble from the left pocket. And so uh, if I want to know what BR is, that's, that's, the prob that's removing a um, blue marble from the right pocket, I can write this, excuse me, I can write this as B, L, and B, R, okay, union with W, L, and B, R. So B, R um, can be written as the union of two disjoint sets. So it's B, R intersect B, L, and BR intersect WL, and this is exhaustive. So because the BL and the WL are exhaustive of the, op of the potential marble uh, or actions that, that this boy can take uh, for the uh, drawing from the left pocket, then their intersection, the union of these intersections is actually the original uh, event, BR. So now if I take the probability of both of these, this is disjoint from this because WL and BL are disjoint. I can't draw both a blue and a white at the same time if I'm only drawing one marble. So this is going to be the probability of BL and BR plus the probability of WL and BR. And now I can use my conditional or my... Uh, multiplication rule, and I have BL, so I'm going to say probability of BL, then I would need the probability of BR given BL, plus I know what WL is, 
WL give a, a times probability of WL times probability of BR given WL. Now, can I calculate these? You say, well, how do you know what probability of BL is? Pardon me. Sometimes this, uh, I hit something and it moves all the way to the end. So, or beginning. So here, um, the probability of BL of taking a blue marble from the left pocket, there's five of them out of nine total. So that's why I know that. And WL is going to be four out of nine total. Okay. So now I have uh, BL five ninths. Now, what's the probability of pulling a red marble out of the right pocket, a blue marble out of the right pocket, if I transferred a blue marble to it from the left? That would change this to five blue marbles out of ten. Now, WL, probability of WL, I need to put the probability there, is four ninths. And now BR given WL means that I would have added one more to here instead of the blue. So I'd have six whites. So I'd have four out of six, or four out of ten. Four out of ten chance of drawing a blue marble um, from my right pocket if I had transferred a white from the left. And so this gives me 25 90ths plus 16 90ths, which is 41 90ths, and there's my answer. Okay. Now we have a, another uh, long uh, example. This is an insurance company that sells several types of insurance policies, and those policies would be homeowners, uh, auto uh, policies, and other policies. So we're defining A as those people that only have an auto, A2, they only have a homeowner's, A3, they have both homeowners and an auto, uh, they could have another, uh, and then A4, they only have other types of policies, not homeowners or auto. And then we're given some probabilities. Uh, PA1, PA2, PA3, and PA4. And it says, let B be the event that a holder of an auto or homeowner policy will renew at least one of those policies. And from past experience, they've given us these probabilities of B given A1, B given A2, and B given A3. It says, given that the person selected at random, so we're gonna randomly select a holder, a policy holder, has an auto or homeowner. So given that they have at least one of those, what's the conditional probability that the person will renew at least one of those policies? Okay, so what is it that we're trying to find out here? Um, so what we're looking for is the probability of B given A1 or union A2, union A3, right? <clears throat> so if they have a homeowner's or, or auto, it has to be one of those three events. Now, we're going to use our formula for conditional probability, um, and we have B intersect, and now A1 union A2 union A3 divided by the probability of A1 union A2 union A3. Now, it's important to note that A1, A2, and A3 are disjoint. A1 are those people who only have an auto. A2, those people that only have a homeowners. A3, those people with both homeowners and auto. So none of them are repeated. And if I have disjoint sets, then when I take the union, the probability of the union, I just take, oops, so sorry. I just take, um, the probability of A1 plus the probability of A2 plus the probability of A3 on the bottom. Now on the top, I need to distribute this B intersect. So I'll have, um, I'm sorry, this uh, iPad is all of a sudden 
uh, popping up these things that move my uh, screen. So this is going to be um, B intersect A1 union, B intersect A2 union, B intersect A3. We distributed the intersection across all the unions. And since A1, A2, and A3 are disjoint, the intersection of B with these uh, is disjoint as well. So again, I can use the axioms of probability. And if I take the probability of a union that are disjoint, it's just a plus sign. B intersect A2 plus B intersect A3. And I'll plug in the values 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.2. And now I need to use my um, multiplication rule. So I need to look at what I have. I don't have the probability of B. What I do have is the probability of A1 and A1 given, or B given A1. So probability of B given A1, and then I have the probability of A1. So I need to use those. So the probability of A1 times the probability of B given A1 plus the probability of A2 times the probability of B given A2 plus the probability of A3 times the probability of B given A3 divided by 0.7. And when we fill in, um, the probability of A1 is 0.3 and then we have 0.6 and then plus 0.2 times 0.7 plus 0.2 times 0.8 and divided by 0.7 and this gives us 0.48 divided by 0.7 and we can change this to 0 0.70 and then we would see that we could get a 0.24 divided by a 0.35 and we could change that to 24 35 and unless I tell you to put it in a decimal place, I'd like you to leave it as a fraction without the decimals here. And this is 0.685714, which is 0.6857 to four decimal places. And that's the answer. So please don't forget to scan your lecture notes by midnight tonight. Make them neat so that when you go back to read them and look at them, you can understand what you wrote. It makes it easier for studying. And then if you have questions, please come to my virtual office hours. If those times don't wait for you, uh, work for you, you can email me and we can try to meet at a different time. So I hope to, this has been um, the end of this video, and I hope you'll, I will see you at the next one. So until next time.